I'm Aaron. I'm the host of the Trial Site News Podcast. Um, um. <laughs> all right. So on the line, we have Dr. Kevin Murphy, and you're in San Diego, right? That's and we, true. We obviously have the same idea for shirts today. Yes. Um, I love it. Yeah, purple. Um, <laughs> and you are a radiation oncologist. Yes. And so you specialize in tumors of the CNS, the central nervous system, so spinal cord, brain, and you are also the founder of Peak Logic, a medical software company, uh, and the Mindset Treatment Center, both based in San Diego. Did I miss anything? No, nope, that's right. That's right. That's okay, that's cool. And you have a lot of experience in repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, and you actually created a personalized approach to that. So I thought for our viewers, maybe to explain what that is first. Okay, great. Thanks for having me, first of all. Sure. And um, I could go Navy, even though it's our- your, your Go Army. Army. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did spend uh, some years as an, back in those days, I was an engineer in the Navy. Um, got out 31 years ago, so it makes me kind of 1991 at the first Gulf War. Oh, I'm um, started point. working in oncology, radiation oncology, specializing in pediatrics, um, stereotactic radio surgery was my uh, sort of specialty for a long time. And I was trying to find ways to fix the brainwave patterns of some of the kids that we were giving radiation to, because oftentimes you can cure a tumor and we do very well with, with hitting our target, but the adjacent brain can get enough dose that you can lose frequency and that frequency loss can create symptoms and depending on where it is in the brain. So we were taking electroencephalograms of these kids and looking for um, some of the waveform defects. And then once we identified them, the goal, the question was, how do you fix that? And so I began taking what were off the shelf technologies of repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation and had been approved maybe 15 years ago for depression and went to the manufacturer and asked them if we could change the graphic user interface to allow me to do more um, fine-tuned adjustments to the parameters of how we give the treatment. Um, and they agreed, and we then began to do and treat a lot of the kids with uh, personalized approaches to their own um, brain. A lot of these kids are six, seven, eight, nine years old, and their frequencies were um, of that age group, whereas a 12 or 18 year old has a different frequency pattern. And so we had to mimic what the brain does well at those ages and then try and tune it. And essentially what we're doing is taking brain waves across the board with personalization of the EEG. And we're looking at ways to recreate a coherent alpha wave throughout the system and monitoring their neurocognition while we do this. And then feeding that, that data back into the computer and saying, are we on the right track? Should we keep doing this, this patterning or should we adjust things? And that became a coin, you know, personal, personalized RTMS and trademarked by Peak Logic, which is a software company I developed to help automate the process so that we could test it in a clinical trial setting. That, that sounds amazing. I saw this word on your, uh, two words on your website, brain arrhythmia. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And that you well, guys, we, tra it's trademarked. To we like to think that. I mean, I think others huh. maybe have, have talked about brain arrhythmias, but we were popularizing the idea that the heart becomes arrhythmic and sure. we fix the arrhythmia. Right. So when the brain becomes arrhythmic, we talk to it and get a medication. <laughs> and our view was, why don't we also fix the anatomy, fix the organ, just like you'd fix the heart arrhythmia. And this is an idea personalized to RTMS is a way to fix the brain arrhythmia and remove noise. And so you can think of all of our brains being like a, an organ or a piano that needs to be tuned periodically. And we look at the waveforms that need to be tuned and we put the magnetic field in the areas of interest and try and tune those waveforms. So what, if I wanted to get this personalized transcranial magnetic stimulation, um, I would sit in a chair, there'd be something over my head. Yeah, we, we do an EEG first. It's right. a five minute wireless EEG. And that electroencephalogram takes our, takes 19 data points. Okay. That goes into our algorithm system that will calculate a set of parameters to treat the patient like a prescription. It, it will pick location, frequency, number of treatments, and so forth. 
that we that the computer and I think are, are best will reproduce the, the appropriate wavelength in the areas of interest. And then a separate machine, the RTMS machine, which is off the shelf. Um, there's about eight manufacturers that make these. Okay. Then delivers treatment. You sit in a what amounts to like a dental chair, and you're reclined, and a magnetic paddle is placed over various parts of your brain, and the operator would then go to the machine and dial in our customization of your protocol and press start. And it might treat for five or six minutes and then we'll move the magnetic field to a new position and repeat. And we do that probably four or five different locations are treated each day, about 20 minutes in total for five days a week. And I'd say most, most things we're treating need about six to eight weeks of treatment. And then you reach this brainwave synchronicity is that we do. well and, and that's every week yeah okay. every week we take a picture of the brain as a follow-up to see how we're doing so we're going to do five days of stimulation reassess the brain decide whether the, the system's accurately moving okay in the direction we like both physically by the eeg right. and subjectively by their by their symptom scores if okay. the computer sees that it's going in the right direction it can then predict a new waveform or a new frequency or a new protocol to help drive that system faster toward a solution Okay. It's mathematical, so it's looking at the math uh, algorithm and trying to calculate a better math. Uh, view. Interesting. Yeah. And you mentioned that you used this in children who had tumors, mm -hmm. um, brain tumors. So what other types of conditions um, is this used in to treat? Well, uh, that's where I started because that was my background as a, as a pediatric radiation right. oncologist and sure. adults as well, chemo brain. A lot of these kids have chemo brain where their brain is slowed down by all the intrathecal methotrexate and other drugs yeah. they're getting. And that, that's also debilitating. Um, sure. A lot of women get chemo brain after breast cancer therapy. Yeah. Um, we started seeing great, great success in that. I had some kids come in with concussion that we started doing evaluations on. Sure enough, their brains look and have a similar profile to uh, some of the patients that had um, physical injury or chemical injury. So what we started to kind of come to the conclusion was that the brain uh, responds to stresses and um, trauma in a similar way. And it slows down its frequencies and creates noise. And the severity of the illness or severity of the insult predicts the severity of the disruption. And so we started treating really um, anybody with a brain. <laughs> so it became one of those, we're treating the brain, we're not treating the symptoms or the, the mind which is treated in psychiatry, we're just treating the physical organ and trying to tune that organ irrespective of, of whose body it was in. So it's been, been applied really across the board to a wide variety of patients. That, that's really interesting. I actually listen to binaural beats and I know, ah. the, yeah, the research on that is, I guess it's all, it's a little bit mixed and the methodology is kind of all over the map, but I, so I know a little bit about the frequencies and you, you mentioned the alpha, but up, there's obviously more than, than that, right? The, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's Well, the binaural beats, first of all, puts one frequency in one ear, right. a different one in the other ear. And the difference between those two creates a phantom a waveform, beat, which, yeah, which, in, which synchronizes your brain. It does actually work to some degree. I placed those on my head, played certain frequencies and then had an EEG on at the same time. And you could see the temporal processing areas um, adjusting somewhat to the binaural beat. So I'm a believer that it works for those regions. Interesting. I don't know that it gets to other parts of your brain yeah. um, as effectively as what we're talking about now with, with TMS. Think of binaural beats as being another form of um, mechanical, but a neurofeedback type of, stim of stimulation where we're taking a magnetic field and making the neurons that we're selecting go a certain speed, irrespective of their wants and wills. <laughs> they will go a certain speed based upon our our, our stimulation. So yeah, binaural beats are, uh, I think, interesting. Um, alpha wave creation is what we're really going after. The alpha state, when I first started Lower doing this anxiety. exercise. Yeah, well, alpha is where your brain goes when you're at rest. Right. And so it's also where you go when you're in the zone. It's where you go when you're reading, when you're having highway hypnosis, when you're locked in, you lose track of time. Athletes get there and the game slows down. This alpha state's a preferred state. And it's, it's, uh, it handles perturbations and bounces back better. And it's very low energy requiring. So low, lower glucose requirements, lower um, metabolism requirements. And it's about 80% of our lives, if you look at the entire time that we're in the wakeful state, we're generally in this alpha state. 
but it's thought to be an inactive state. And when you form a nice and active quiet mind, it forms a nice alpha wave. And that wave is a certain frequency and you can measure it. And we like to give people back their existing waves. So if they're making a great wave, we want to copy that wave and try and amplify their good signal um, at rest. So you do, do you work with athletes too? We do. We do. Yeah. One of our trials upcoming with the Department of Defense is going to be on performance enhancement. And uh, there'll be awesome. some other there'll be some other endpoints we're taking. But if you can concentrate better, if you're less um, nervous, if you're sleeping better, yeah, uh, you perform better. And so we've seen golfers hit the ball further ahead. Um, shooters shoot better, um, wow. meaning like rifle shooter, shooters. Right. So I mean, it's been kind of a um, a fun thing because again, we're just taking the brain and tuning it and finding um, improved performance uh, in, in a number of sports. Fascinating. All right, so you mentioned um, one trial. Are, what, so what are you doing in the way of research? Are there any trials in the works? Yep, so the first step was getting an automation process going so you could actually test something. I was at the first stage doing this by hand. You clearly can't do a trial like that. So I had to find a way to make a software where both groups A and B could be given the same opportunity to have the um, protocol given to it. So that ability to create that has been has taken us some time, about three years. We're probably 6,000 patients into this database and 30,000 EEGs. And in that, it's getting smart, very machine learned and, and deciding how to direct traffic for us in terms of, of where and what frequency to give and for how long and so forth. So that process has been done and is automated. We then approached the FDA and said, let's do some studies. We had some funding and we do have two fully funded trials in the DOD. One for, one for performance, as I mentioned, and then one for chronic pain and opioid reduction. And that's gonna be um, uh, at a big military hospital on the East Coast. And then we have another two other trials that were are funded um, in the state of Hawaii, of all places, where we have uh, um, a IBS trial, an irritable bowel syndrome trial, and a trial of major depression disorder um, also being, um, being planned. And the goal there is that we just saw a lot of IBS patients um, have uh, reduction in their symptoms when, they, when their anxiety went down with our treatment. And so there was so much uh, enthusiasm there that led to a trial. The, the MDD trial, the major depression disorder trial, would be a um, trial against the, the standard of care, which is standard TMS. Uh, and we'd be doing personalized TMS for that subset of patients. So, well, so that's interesting. So you're going to test the personal approach versus just the standard approach. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah one of, Very cool. So our trials can, can go against sham or we can go against the existing standard of care. Right. Um, we, we had a little bit of trouble finding groups that would want to use the standard of care when they had experienced the personalization. Mm. They didn't want to take their own patients and put them through standard of care if they could do the personalization. So that kind of slowed down our, our ability to get accrual um, with some PIs along those roads because they were not interested in standard once they, they'd seen the results of the personalization. So how far along are these trials? Well, they're fully funded, machines okay. are on site, trials, uh, protocols are approved. The IRB is still going through um, final review of the chronic pain and opioid study. The other two in, are, in, are in the IRB and one is complete for performance. And this was all again supposed to happen last year, maybe middle of last year, and COVID pushed us all back. So we were set to be enrolling patients back, you know, last last uh, 2020, and here we are, 2021. So it's it's rolling back open again. A lot of these sites are doing trials again, getting back online. So we're hoping, we were told at least, um, that one of the DoD trials would start before the end of the year. That's that's fascinating, and I know was the chronic I know chronic pain and opioid use is an issue with veterans. Is this study gonna be on active duty soldiers? Or is, this, is this with veterans? The uh, the first study on performance is for active duty and the second study is for veterans. Makes sense. And, and again, that, that was seen in a population of patients who were being treated for other reasons, but also had a addiction to opioids due to chronic pain. Yeah. And there was such an improvement in their use of, of opioids there of a reduction that they um, decided to do a trial just on that, on chronic pain, yeah, and opioid reduction. Wow, that's that's amazing stuff. So, and and you also have slides that you can share 
And I know we can post them up on the trial site website, yep. and that'll be more information on um, the personalized TMS and then, yep. and then the trials as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, confirm with the PIs, you know, the, the sure. level of what we're going to show. But yeah, I can definitely give you some slides yeah. outline PRTMS and then a couple highlighted slides showing where these studies are being done and the anticipated start dates. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fascinating and it's a non pharmacological, it's non medic medication approach to issues. And if, and you know, if you, if you show that efficacy, I think that's amazing. Um, definitely re really cool. Yeah, a lot of people are attracted to that. I, I am too. That we yeah. can uh, make some change, make, make changes that aren't requiring more medication management. So yeah, and I'd say that you know some patients will of course will stay on those on some of the medications or in some cases reduce the amount needed, like in the in the case of opioids. In some cases they go off their opioids completely, which is a goal for that. Wow, but, um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's been really really exciting. It's been fun to be part of. Um, certainly cutting edge work that. Yeah. Creates controversy. We're we, we're we're not we're not familiar with that that whole thing, but controversy. Um, <laughs> yeah, the controversy of trying to bring something out that's that's new and uh, sure, you know, disruptive and really like, like you just said, it's um this was born out of necessity trying to fix uh you know brain waves in kids that had damage that led yeah. to to kids that had milder damage like concussion and it led toward then patients with um, just cognitive. Uh, uh, yeah. behavioral disorder or some other um, frontal cortice um, uh, like lack of function. And we were seeing across the board um, benefits across a, a wide variety of patients. So Dr. Murphy, if people want to learn more about this personalized TMS or these trials, where should they go to find, to find it? I think best would be prtms.com. PRTMS.com. Uh, PRTMS.com. Okay. And then we'll be having, I can list on there the, the trials upcoming and they can maybe link to the sites. I'll have to confirm with those sites. Sure. But how they want to best do that. But um, I think if there's other questions about the technology or uh, what patients are applicable to this, I'm more than happy to take uh, phone calls or emails from interested parties. We're in, we're in 12 states right now with the software being used by 20 or so different providers. And so doctors, you have to be a doctor to use it in your clinic. Is yeah. That, yeah. Okay. So what we do is we provide a prescription for those doctors in yeah. Texas mm -hmm. or in Florida, and they treat their patients uh, with our recommendations or, or not. They have a choice to choose that uh, protocol um, and Peak Logic manages that, that, that database for them. And oh, nice. So you manage all the, the data, the, the hard stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we have our our, our HIPAA compliant uh, right. encrypted servers, and we have the redundancy of of that need for the trials, and it's very well uh, tightly uh, controlled given the the need with the Department of Defense to have a oh yeah definitely very platform. So we have that secure platform, and we um, we service maybe like I say uh, probably um, at any active time, fifteen or more sites are actively using the software. Well, I definitely will keep track of your website and this research because I have a personal interest in non-medication routes to these types of issues. And I know a lot of people in the veteran community, which I'm strongly linked to, uh, definitely are also very interested. So it, it, it's cool. It's cool stuff that you're doing. And thanks so much for coming on and sharing and uh, I look forward to sharing this with our viewers and seeing the slides as well. Yeah, great. And I'll share more of that with you um, offline as well. So definitely. And just so I have the last word since I'm Army, I just want to sure. say beat, na beat Navy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good for you. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. so much. Yeah. Enjoy the, the rest of your day out there in okay, San Diego. Okay. Bye.